Welcome, welcome to the second official Wedding Industry News podcast. My name is Pippa Florraine and today I'm welcomed by a very good friend of mine, um, an industry professional for many, many years, um, Rebecca Badley from TDR Bridal Birmingham. Welcome back. Hello, Pip. How are you? I am very, very well, and I'm so excited to have you as a guest on my brand new Wedding Industry News podcast. Oh, I'm really excited to be here. Fabulous. It's super exciting, actually, because having worked so close with you over the last year, I know all the ins and outs of TDR and the amazing machine that it is that you've created. And oh, remind nice. me, how many years have you been going now as TDR? I think this is our 17th. Something like that, yeah. Um, we've lost count. Me, my husband and I keep saying we need to go back and work out the exact date, but I'm pretty sure it was September 2007 or six, but we're not sure which one. God, and I remember back in the days, let's say it must have been about 15 years ago, I think we probably started yeah. working together back in the Wedding Ideas days. So yeah. how far you've come with the business yeah yeah gosh from the early days it's very very different but fundamentally the same as well which is you know um I suppose in terms of the ethos and what what we what we believe and what we do it's the same it's just on a larger scale and as you say it's a little bit of a machine now it's an incredible machine and I I just wanted to talk a little bit before we move forward into next year this year next year um, where you've been over the last year because you had some incredible changes at TGR and some incredible achievements over the last year. I know yeah. we focused and helped promote the, the inclusivity shoot that you did, which was so groundbreaking for the industry because I've never done that before. Yeah, no, that was something that was really... Um, I've had in my mind probably, oh, I'm going to say six or seven years I've wanted to do that, might possibly longer. Um uh, but I remember talking to um, somebody at Tarragat actually and, and, and saying to them, where are the black models? Do, do black women not get married? And it was like, well, yeah, we know, but, you know, and I'm like, well, no, I, I don't know. Um, so that, that kind of, that uh, encompassed with the fact that my brother's disabled and I had quite a, an eye-opening experience with him kind of led me to um, want to do it. However, it was not a cheap shoot to do. Um, so it, it's kind of, I've had to wait until financially um, it's something that we could really invest in. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, I mean, it was just, for us, it was really, a, I can't tell you the kind of day we had, but it was, emotional it was celebratory it was um yeah it was just every emotion you could possibly think of it it was it was fabulous um and, and you got amazing images out of it and what an amazing ama yeah <laughs> and, and images that can be shared worldwide yeah. you know they're not just tdr they're they're images that should be shared worldwide you know yeah, every, and it wasn't just married it, and Black, it wasn't just disabled you covered such a spectrum of different sort of abilities and people and you know just and that was so visible in the shoot and that's what I loved about it it's just that you yeah. really showed real people as they are because everyone gets married everybody and everybody deserves to feel beautiful and everybody deserves to um kind of have their day and and feel special and feel amazing and I, and I just wanted to show um, you know, the world, the public, um, everybody that actually um, it, it, you know, they, they, it's them too. It's them too. Mm -hmm. They're able to see themselves, um, you know, in that kind of uh, situation, being married in a wedding dress and, and glamorous and beautiful and, you know, no matter who they are, whatever walk of life they're from, um, and, and I think um, that's kind of a TDR ethos generally, to be fair. Um, yeah. I, it's sort of 
something that me and the girls are incredibly proud of and incredibly humbled actually to to have been able to be a part of it with all those amazing people. Well, I think it was such an achievement and I hope those images continue to be shared and um, seen because they are absolutely stunning and, and we, we loved featuring them up on Wedding Industry News and the Bridal Buzz. Um, but also let's let's talk about the shop because, you know, it's an incredible place and you've got, you know, six beautiful suites for brides. But th- last year you launched your pink, pink palette. <laughs> nah. <laughs> tell us about your celebration suite because oh my god it looks amazing so um it kind of goes back to just pre-covid we just um had a big extension which had enabled us to have um three new suites at tdr because we got three but but the fourth one we can now use was used as an office and we, so we just had this huge, big extension and we were really excited and ready to go. And then COVID hit. So during COVID, I, um, I you know, I've watched, I've watched lots of people, obviously, in the industry and what they say and what their advice is. And one of the things that they've all always said is you've got to know your bride and, you know, what her budget is and, you know, where she lives and, and how she thinks and da 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 and I and I've really thought about it over COVID, and I thought, well, I, I don't I don't want to niche myself to one kind of bride with one kind of budget and you know one kind of expectation of the service they should have. I don't I don't want to do that. I you know I want to be accessible to every bride. Um, so I made a really conscious decision um, with my marketing and um, with the um, designers that we held about how we could be more inclusive on that level as well um and not just be you know for the people with a certain budget or a you know a certain vibe um so we really changed tactics during covid and actually it was a great time for me to really stop jump off the the hamster wheel and assess everything um, so when we came back, we had absolutely huge growth because of the new suites that we'd we'd created and because of the different kind of marketing we were doing. Um, and that literally, I mean, it took off more than we could ever have imagined. It was that the growth was exponential. But um, by the end of last year, we realised that already we had outgrown the building um which was you know who would have thought so the shop on the opposite corner actually I it go this goes back to 21 from November 21 I was negotiating to try and buy the empty shop derelict shop on the opposite corner um and when we eventually got it which was the 24th of May this year uh, sorry 23 um we knew exactly what we were going to do. We were going to move our menswear department, which was in one particular part of the main store. Mm-hmm. We were going to transfer that across the road. Um, we were going to have a new big fitting suite so that when brides are coming in and having their uh, first pin fit with the seamstress, they've got a, a more beautiful place than just a changing room. And we were able to make a bigger prep room uh in the new building so yeah we got the keys on the 24th of may we completed by the 8th of august don't ask me how because i just <laughs> looking back on no idea um but it enabled us to create um instead of the menswear department we were able to create the celebration suite and the celebration suite is exactly what it says it's um kind of the place where brides can celebrate so what rather than you know how when you sell a wedding dress it's all celebration at the start and there's nothing in between um and so I was really I really wanted to try and uh, create somewhere that when their dress arrived they'd have another celebration because it is another celebration and they do bring different people actually to that appointment um, so it's just a nice place. There's a beautiful pink girly bar. Oh you know, God, I've seen it. it's there's, there's 
cherry blossom everywhere. It's very pink. The floor's pink, the bar's pink, the walls are pink, but TDR is pink. Um, and uh, yeah, we, there's, a, there's a screen in there where they can have um, a confetti cannon, um, you know, and a say yes to the dress moment again. Um, oh. So special, so special yeah. just for them to have a place where they can keep that process going and that excitement going uh, throughout the whole thing. Yeah, yeah, because you, you have to be really careful that you don't lose contact with those brides in between the buying process and the fittings or the, you know, in, in my opinion, I feel it's important to keep that connection going in some way. Um, yeah. And it, it's just worked out to be the perfect perfect space for that to happen so oh my god so lucky your brides <laughs> everyone wants to be a tgr bride and celebrate in your suite yeah. um so this leads me on to another question because this week over on wedding industry news with your help thank you very much we covered um you know no shows and and the whole big question of do you charge for appointments and i'd love to tap into your sort of thoughts on that and how you deal with that tgr yeah, so um, there's there's a few different different reasons why I don't charge for appointments. Um, first and foremost, I'm I'm a I'm an old fashioned retailer. That's you know that's what I do, and uh, I always say to people that are, are charging or thinking of charging, um, you know, if Gucci wanted to charge you to go into their shop where would you go and buy your handbag from if you could afford one well you'd go to Mulberry you'd go you'd go to Vivian Westwood you'd go to Louis Vuitton you'd go anywhere apart from where they're charged what why would you pay to go and spend a couple of thousand pounds in a store and whilst I, I understand the thought the theory behind well you know they get cocktails they get this they get that well they should anyway, because hospitality is part and parcel of what we do now in bridal. And, um, you know, I kind of feel like TDR is our home and we are inviting people into our home. And with that comes, you know, comes hospitality. And so um, you you have to kind of switch your mindset from no shows and they're not turning up to like what can I do to make sure that they want to turn up and they you know they want this appointment and they've been waiting for it and they're on a waiting list and they're really excited and they've gathered everybody that's really important together you know with them to make sure this appointment happens for them um, yeah. and, and, you, and you have to go down that road and a friend of mine um who uh, used to have a bridal shop, a big bridal shop down in Reading. Um, I always remember her saying to me, and I'm going back eight years. <clears throat> um, I've tried. She said I've tried charging, and it and it's great to start with, and it and it is great to start with, and we have done it here in the past years ago, um, and this is when I was having the conversation with her. Um, and the point is, it is great to start with and you do get paid and you do get something for what people want to call the time wasters, which, again, is another subject. I don't believe in time wasters. Um, yes, you do get some money back from it, but long term, it's not sustainable to fill your diary. And mm. if you fill your diary, your job as a shop owner, a stylist, is to ensure that those brides want to buy with you and ultimately are styled in such a way that they don't need to go anywhere else and so we we don't have no shows as a general rule we have um we we do a five point touch before they come in so we're in contact with those brides our relationship has already been um forged with those brides before they actually even come into store and they are bursting to get through the doors by the time they get here. Um, and, and I believe that that is a much healthier way to ensure no shows and to not put brides off by charging for appointments. They don't like it and they're savvy women. And, and who would, I would not pay to go into a shop. Whether well, I think it's amazing. You know, 
Yeah, I mean, look, everyone's got an opinion on it in the industry, and I'd love to know everyone's opinions. But that, as a you know, a philosophy, and especially because of how you work, and you've proved it to be a success with TGR. Brides yeah. buy into the club; they want 